In this video lesson, we are going to add XML support to our project so that our web service endpoints are able to work with either JSON or XML representation of a resource. For example, a client application that consumes our web service endpoint might request user information in XML format. And for our web service endpoint to be able to respond back with XML representation of a resource, we will need to add to our project one more dependency. So I will bring in a new browser window and I will go to Maven repository and will search for a dependency that is called Jackson Data Format XML. And the very first dependency that is in the list, Jackson Data Format XML, is the one that I need. I will copy XML snippet of one of the versions, copy its XML and go back to my project open up pom.xml file and paste it at the very top at this moment. Format my source code. Remove the version of this dependency so that it is managed by Sprint Boot. And this is the only dependency that I need to add to make my project support XML. In this video lesson, we are going to learn how to make our web service endpoint respond back with JSON or XML representation of a resource. When client applications send a request to our web service endpoint to get a resource, like for example, to get user details, it can provide a special HTTP header that will request our web service endpoint to respond back with either JSON or XML. And this special HTTP header is called accept. I have HTTP GET request open in my postman. And if I switch to headers tab, there I can provide authorization header and I can provide other headers, like for example, accept HTTP header. And then to enable it, I will need to check the checkbox. So when client application includes this accept HTTP header, it can provide a value that will either be application JSON or application XML, for example. And in my case, I have enabled accept HTTP header and the value of my accept HTTP header is going to be application forward slash JSON. By default, if no accept HTTP header is provided, our web service endpoint will respond back with JSON representation of a resource. Although this can be changed and we can make our web service endpoint to respond back with XML representation of a resource by default. All right, so let's learn how to do it. So by default, our web service endpoint will respond back with JSON representation. I can disable the accept HTTP header. And if I start up my application and send the HTTP request, it should respond back with JSON representation. All right, my application is running. So if I send the HTTP request now to get this user details, it will respond back with JSON representation. To make my web service endpoint respond back with XML representation, a client application will need to provide accept HTTP header with a value application forward slash XML. So I will change it application forward slash XML. And now if I send this HTTP GET request informing my web service endpoint that I would like to accept back application XML, it should respond back with XML. All right, the request is successful and I have received XML representation of a user resource. So by changing accept HTTP header, a client application can request our web service endpoint for user details either in XML or JSON representation. Now let's learn how to make our application respond back with XML representation by default. Here I have user controller and a method that handles HTTP GET request and returns back user details. Now, to make this web service endpoint respond back with XML representation by default, I'll need to edit the get mapping annotation a little bit by adding a property that specifies that it produces XML representation. And it is done the following way. I will need to separate the left side part that starts with path equals with a comma, then space and type produces equals and then provide a media type dot and then from the list of available media types i will select application underscore xml underscore value now let me import media type and it will need to come from org spring framework http package and if we leave it like this and specify that our web service endpoint 
produces XML representation only, then if client application sends a request containing accept HTTP header request in JSON representation, then it will get back an error message saying that our web service could not find acceptable representation. But this configuration will make our web service endpoint respond back with XML representation by default. To make our application be able to produce both XML and JSON representation, we will need to either remove this produces part completely or add to it one more media type which is application JSON media type. And to do that, we will need to surround media types with curly brackets. And then I will need to separate media types with a comma. And as a second media type, I will provide application JSON value. Now, let me add a break here to make it fit on the screen. All right, so now when we have configured our web application endpoint to be able to respond with either XML or JSON, what would be the default representation? What if the client application does not include the accept HTTP header in the request? If we do not provide any of these media types, then the default representation of a resource will be JSON. But if we have configured more than one media type, then their order matters. If the client application does not include accept HTTP header in the request, then our web service will respond back with a resource using a representation that is configured first in the list of media types. And in my case, the first media type is XML. So if the accept HTTP header is not provided, then my web service endpoint will respond back with XML representation. Let's try it. I will stop my application, save the file and start it up again. Bring Postman. And once my application starts up, I will first send HTTP GET request without providing any accept HTTP header. So I will send it now. And because I did not provide accept HTTP header, the default response is an XML representation. And this is because the first media type, which is in the list of produces, is XML value. This is why the default representation of a resource is an XML. Now let's go back to our postman. But if I include accept HTTP header and provide application JSON as a value, then I should expect my web service endpoint to respond back with JSON representation. Let's try it out. And here we go. I got back JSON representation. And if I go back to my source code and if I change the order of these media types and provide application JSON value media type first in the list, then if the accept HTTP header is not provided, my web service endpoint will respond back with JSON representation. All right, so once I have decided on the media types that I want my web service endpoint to support and I have decided on their order, I can add the producers block to all other web service endpoints that I have. For example, I can copy this producers part from the get mapping and add it to the post mapping of a method that creates user. I will add parentheses and inside of the parentheses for the post mapping, I will paste produces, but will delete the comma like this. Some web service endpoints can accept information sent to them in the request body of HTTP request. And an example of such web service endpoint is create user web service endpoint. For example, to create a new user, I would send HTTP post request to forward slash users web service endpoint and in the HTTP request body, I will include JSON payload containing user details. We can configure our web service endpoint to accept information not only in JSON format, but also in XML format. And to do that, we will need to configure our web service endpoint that accepts request body, for example, this one that creates a new user to also accept information in XML format. And it's very easy to do the request mapping, for example, the post mapping. Additionally to produces, it can also accept consumes. So we can specify which media type our web service endpoint can consume. So I will add space here and I will type consumes equals. And then I will open and close curly brackets. And inside of the curly brackets, just like with produces, I will specify a list of media types that my web service endpoint can consume. So I'll just copy these two media types and paste them here like this. I think I can put them into one line to make them look nice. 
and then the consumes part and the produces part. Let me also put this one on a single line. This consumes and produces, I need to separate with comma like this. And now the error will go away. So now my web service endpoint can consume information in either XML or JSON format. And it can also respond back with XML or JSON format. So let's try it out. I will restart my application. The create user method that handles HTTP POST request receives information in request body and then that information is converted from JSON into user details request model class. So we will need to send XML payload that will be converted from XML to this information. Let's do that. I will need to copy class name first and then I will bring in postman and here's my HTTP POST request that will be sent to forward slash users to create a new user. And now I will need to create XML payload instead of JSON. So I will quickly create a root element like this. And the root element will need to end with the backslash. By the way, I used class name here, user details request model, but it doesn't need to be class name. You can come up with a different name. And then I will need to provide first name, Sergey, close XML element, then last name, and so on. Email, and finally password. Like this. And I will need to delete old JSON format. And now for this XML payload to work, I'll first need to update HTTP headers in my HTTP request to specify that I'm sending content type, which is application XML. So the content type header, I will update from JSON to XML. And I will also specify that I want to receive back as a response information in XML. So I will update the accept HTTP header as well, like this. All right, let's double check if everything is okay. I have a warning here, right? I will need to change JSON to XML. And now the warning is gone and my XML payload looks good. All right, so let's try sending it. And here we go. I got back HTTP status 200. Let's switch to body. And here's my XML payload that I have received back. I was able to successfully create a new user with email address test at test20.com. And my web service endpoint is working well with either XML or JSON. All right, so let's continue.